Mandatory evacuation orders are still in effect because of wildfires, but many residents are defying orders and staying behind to help the community. Residents in Point Doom are supporting their neighbors, delivering gas and other necessities. We talked with volunteers there. And humans aren't the only ones having to evacuate. We'll show you where horses, pigs, and other large animals are being relocated. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. Another round of Santa Ana winds is fueling the Woolsey fire. Flames have already devastated many communities. The fires have scorched thousands of acres and hundreds of homes from coast to canyons. Good evening, I'm Trevor Sahaki. And I'm Nikki Walker. Firefighters are working around the clock to save what they can. The fire began last Thursday and spread southwest to Malibu, where some residents are returning home to ashes. SoCal Edison is now being investigated for its possible role in this disaster. An electrical facility may have malfunctioned near ground zero of the fire. At least two people have died in the fire. An estimated 370 structures have burned. Over 200,000 people were forced to evacuate their homes in Malibu, Calabasas, parts of Westlake Village and West Hills, Bell Canyon and Hidden Hills. Currently, the fire is only 20% contained and has spread to almost 92,000 acres. Annenberg Media's reporter Cecil Hannibal is in Malibu on Pacific Coast Highway, near where the fire burned. Cecil, what's the latest? Yes, I'm here on the PCH at the corner of John Tyler Drive. Now, I'm right here because if you go any further up Malibu, you won't have any cell phone connection. The telephone lines have been destroyed from the fire. Now, we've been out here for about 30 minutes, and the wind is blowing ash, sand, and debris all into your eyes. Uh, police have, have put up three barricades to keep people from coming up this highway. You can see the cars going by right now. Those aren't regular people. Those are first responders. Now, um, I went to several homes where the damage was was awful. You saw that cars were melted to the ground. Now we went to one home where there were still family pictures up, but the rest of the houses were destroyed. Now some residents decided to stay. We spoke with a man who said that he was not going to leave his home. He said that this is where this is his home and he's not going to leave. So he stayed put. They had fire hoses and they were guarding their home from the fire. Now we can't go any further up. We can't show you a lot of the damage because it's unsafe right now from the wind and it's dark right now, but we will have more updates coming for you shortly. Live from Malibu, Cecil Hannibal. I'm from Annenberg Media. Annenberg Media's team of reporters traveled throughout the fire zone to assess the damage and talk to victims and volunteers. Fires now burning in the greater LA area include the Rocky Fire near Simi Valley, the Hill Fire, and the Woolsey Fire. Mandatory evacuations remain in place for several communities, including Malibu, but not everyone has chosen to leave. Annenberg Media's Madeline Audley spoke to residents about why they're hanging behind, despite continuing risks like spot fires. Here in Malibu's Paradise Cove, these residents have stayed behind. We all helped each other, and if we weren't here putting out the spot fires, our places would be gone. And this is everything we have. In this community of mobile homes overlooking the Pacific, a few are defying mandatory evacuation orders. As soon as they tell us we can't do something, we're going to find a way to get it done. The Woolsey fire has left its mark along the Malibu coastline, leaving some streets unrecognizable. It's apocalyptic. I mean, it, it, it's the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. Cece Woods, who runs a local Malibu news outlet, has evacuated. But each day, she comes back to act as the eyes and ears of those who left. We are going street to street, um, checking on damage, checking on people, making sure everybody's okay. We took a ride with her this morning, deep in the burn zone. We We're press. We should do this. Press. When Woods sees smoke flaring up, she's quick to tell authorities. But she says she isn't always happy with their response. We are seeing trucks that are sitting stationary while fires are going on around us. Tom Schaefer, a public information officer on the fire, says authorities are doing their best and that the numbers should speak for themselves. More than 3,200 people have been deployed to help with the fire. One of the scariest things about these fires is just how unpredictable they can be. This house behind me, perfectly intact. But if we walk just next door, we see a house turn completely into rubble. 
That's one of the reasons authorities urge residents to comply with evacuation orders. But those still here say they feel they have to stay. You stay put where you are and you do what you can to help the other people. For Annenberg Media, I'm Madeline Audley. When the Woolsey Fire jumped the 101 freeway, the small community of Malibu Lake was in harm's way. We talked with a few of the residents just now being allowed back. The Woolsey Fire burned through Malibu Lake Thursday evening, the first fire to come through in nearly 40 years. Patty Lufley and other residents are starting to trickle back to the community to see which homes are left standing. And our house was saved. We were so thankful. But there's about 32 homes, from what I understand, in the Malibu Lake proper that have been taken. And then Lakeside, there's another group of houses back there, too. Um, but we don't know how many. But it's just so sad for all our neighbors. Less than 10 miles away in Agora Hills, Jeff Pugh stayed at his house despite the mandatory evacuation. He's one of the lucky ones. His neighborhood was spared. It, it was interesting. I mean, I wasn't too concerned because of where we're located because we're on a lake and down by the freeway and there was probably a whole city to burn before it got to us. He watched a helicopter scoop up water from the lake right behind his house. It was catching up with the fire that had already reached Malibu. Volunteers are setting up a new shelter for fire evacuees at the California Lutheran University. This shelter will hold up to about 300 evacuees and will merge several smaller shelters in the area. Once it opens, the Cal Lutheran Shelter will provide three hot meals per day, as well as water and snacks. And Verizon will offer free internet access and phone charging. Representatives from insurance companies will also be available. We're having volunteers that have been working in other the shelters and just volunteers coming in, helping us get this, this shelter ready for anybody who's being moved from the three shelters or four shelters that we've had open to one shelter. And we'll have it known that this one is open as soon as we have the facility set up. And then anybody can come who has been displaced. The Cal Lutheran Shelter is expected to open soon, and volunteers say that it will remain open for as long as evacuees need a place to stay. When disasters like these hit, it's great to see the outpouring of support. Residents are helping with the rescue effort in Point Doom. Outside a police checkpoint in Topanga Beach, rescue volunteers are fueling up at local ARCO stations. They're delivering much needed gas to refuge shelters and homes that have been out of power. We're working with the Point Doom disaster relief people right now to get all this gasoline back out there because there's a handful of generators at homes so that there's at least some houses that have some lights and refrigeration but uh, there's no gasoline from here I guess all the way through Ventura County line. There's just such a broad spectrum of emotion that happens in the process you really never know how you're gonna respond and then all of a sudden you're banding together with a couple of neighbors and and hitting the Hitting the buckets, the, hitting the hot spots with, with buckets of water, and everyone's, everyone's doing it. Support is coming not just from those who live here. Volunteers from other states have arrived to help with rescue efforts. The Woolsey Fire is affecting more than just humans. As Annenberg Media's Grace Manthe reports, some organizations are finding ways to help those who can't help themselves. Fire affects all creatures, great and small including our feathery, furry, and four-legged best friend. It's always insane whenever something reaches you that closely. Malibu horse trainer Chad Mahaffey had to evacuate about 90 horses to the Hanson Dam horse park when the fires hit. Burned right down to our barn, our property line, and all that stuff. And we're glad that we had the day to just keep moving, get everybody out, and get the whole facility relocated. Animal sanctuaries in the area are helping trainers and owners who can't bring their animals with them. We're going to care for these animals just as much as if they were our animals because, frankly, as long as they're on our property, they are. So every single one of them, they have that look of gratitude on their face. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the first time that big guys like this have had to be evacuated from their homes. Last year's Thomas Fire brought over 100 animals to the Humane Society of Ventura County. And this year, it's even more. Our pledge is to care for these animals as long as necessary. Despite the care, some animals still seem anxious and strangers are most likely putting them in trailers and taking them out of their habitat, their homes. So it is a scary situation for humans and animals. For ways to help the animals, visit our website, uscannenbergmedia.com. For Annenberg Media, I'm Grace Manthe. Students at Pepperdine University are feeling the effects of the Woolsey Fire. Annenberg Media's Angel Vascara reports on how the fires are throwing a wrench in the university's academic plans.
Right now, Pepperdine looks more like a ghost town than a university. It's late into the semester, but all classes have been canceled until late November. Students took these pictures of the Woolsey fires, which struck the Malibu area on Friday. Students were encouraged to shelter in place. I was really scared because I'm not from California. I've never had to deal with wildfires before. Now I'm standing in a canyon just off of the Pepperdine campus here in Malibu. You can see behind me, these mountains really go on for a while, burnt and charred, a lot of burnt down trees. Fortunately for those in the Pepperdine community, their campus went largely untouched by the Woolsey fire. This part of campus still looks like Malibu, like it always has. Uh, but as you go up the hills, it starts to look a little bit like the moon. The university faced criticism for urging students to stay sheltered on campus with fires close by. But one Pepperdine graduate who was at the scene says students were free to choose. All students were free to leave. Many students did leave as soon as the shelter in place, um, as soon as shelter in place was put into place. At no point were students being held on campus. That was one of the most frustrating uh, reports that we were hearing. Classes will be back in session on November 25th following Thanksgiving break. For Annenberg Media, I'm Angel Viscara. USC students and their families were forced to evacuate their homes because of the Woolsey fire. Some managed to save personal belongings. Some saw their neighborhoods burn to ashes. My best friend lost her home and that was a really hard experience for me because I probably have stayed at that house more than either of my own houses and that was her childhood home for her whole life. I don't know what happened. I don't know why like our house was saved and the ones right next door to me weren't. If you like there's pictures and it's just like everything is burnt around my house and my house isn't. Just like unimaginable seeing something that you drive by every day not there anymore and knowing that the next time I drive in um, to see my parents house it's the landscape's gonna be completely different. Interim USC President Wanda Austin today shared resources to help students affected by the fire support and advocacy 213-821-4710 and counseling services 213-740-9355. Why does California have so many wildfires? We talked to an earth science expert about how climate change can have an effect. Firefighters are battling the flames at both ends of the state. We talked to firefighters in Northern California. We do anything for kids, yet one in five children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Here's the latest out of Northern California. 29 people are dead and more than 200 unaccounted for in the campfire. This makes it the deadliest fire in modern California history. The fire is just east of Chico between Tahoe and Mendocino National Forest. The flame scorched over 100,000 acres and is only 25% contained. More than 6,000 homes have been destroyed in the town of Paradise. Residents swamped the one main road in and out of the town, making evacuations even more difficult. More than 15,000 structures are still in danger in Butte County, and 5,000 firefighters are working to put out the fire. PG&E is being investigated for its possible role in starting the fire. Firefighters are working around the clock to protect homes and lives. Help is arriving from all over the West to relieve an exhausted men and women. As the incident gets bigger, you have to 
draw from a much larger pool or a much larger area. So that's why you have these resources coming in from out of state. Mm -hmm. And like the campfire, as big as it is, it's not the only fire going on, in, in, even in the state of California. Um, so uh, to try and manage all those resources is a, is a real challenge. Teams and equipment from nearly a dozen states have been sent. The governor of Texas is sending more than 200 firefighters to California. Most of the strike teams will stay for at least two weeks. Californians are enraged after controversial tweets by President Trump about the destructive fires. Our political anchor, Albert Chien, has more on the story. Albert? Thank you, Nikki. In a series of tweets over the weekend, Donald Trump blamed California for the fires. On Saturday, Trump tweeted out, quote, there is no reason for these massive, deadly, and costly forest fires in California, except that forest management is so poor. Remedy now or no more Fed payments. Governor Jerry Brown and Senator Lindsey Graham have responded. The scientists and the engineers and the firefighters all tell us forest management is one element. It's only one. And uh, we have to take care of the whole range of threats. But we do have a forest management problem all over the country we need to address. But, you know, uh, California will receive the money they need. But going forward, we need to look at some of the underlying causes of these fires. Congressman Ted Liu from Malibu tweeted back, quote, Dear Ad Donald Trump, what is wrong with you? Disaster victims deserve help and sympathy. In a later tweet, Liu urged the president to approve the governor's request to declare the fires a major disaster. This would bring in more money for relief efforts. Trump has not said whether he would issue a major disaster declaration. Back to you, Trevor Nicky. Thank you. Well, Trevor, a lot of people are wondering how the Santa Ana winds will affect the fires. That's right. Let's check in with our weather anchor, Draco Guan, for more on that. Hey guys, it's sunny and windy today, and the fire danger remains high as offshore winds keep the air very dry. Let's see the current condition. Uh, it's 70 degrees right now, and the humidity, humidity is down to teens. So red flag warnings and high winds warning remain through tomorrow night. As for tomorrow, let's see at the Inland Empire. Tomorrow uh, in the Inland Empire will remain above the average, and uh, Malibu as, and the Semi Valley, we can see it's, uh, it's oddly enough that um, uh, it's oddly enough uh, we got warmer temperature at the coast because the winds push the warmth to the coastline. So the areas like Irvine, Malibu, and also to our uh, uh, downtown, and we see uh, we can see that it's actually see uh, the Long Beach 75 LAX is actually warmer than the inland areas. So we, when we look at the five-day forecast, we're looking at the Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, it's continue to have this uh, uh, windy uh, weather. And over tonight, we're expecting to see another round of very strong gusty winds with gust ups to 40 miles per hour. And we can expect more winds on Wednesday before dying down the rest of the week. But um, uh, unfortunately, there's no rains for the entire week. Fire officials say uh, this devastating fire, uh, like it's a wind driven uh, event. So the Santa Ana winds are going to continue to make this a very dangerous situation. So in early this fall, uh, hillside, vegetaria, uh, hillside vegetation has had all summer to dry out. The Santa Ana winds suck out any lost moisture um, to trigger. Uh, so all it takes is just a cigarette to trigger a fire that's fanned by more Santa Anas. So we're looking at the, um, so these fires burn harder, bitter, uh, bigger, and faster than any other fires, and they tend to burn closer to urban areas. A red flag warning remains in effect until Wednesday afternoon for Vent uh, Ventura and LA County Mountain. The warning ends tomorrow afternoon for Malibu and the coast. So guys, uh, it's really bad for the Santa Ana winds to happen, and there might be some other uh, reason for that. For example, climate change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Draco. Thank you. Is there a connection between climate change and these deadly fires? We pose that question to an earth science professor here on campus. Naturally, uh, the American West is prone to wildfires for a number of reasons, and the vegetation had adapted to these. However, climate change is making things worse uh, on a number of fronts. Uh, one is that uh, the temperature is higher uh, by about three degrees Fahrenheit than it should be at this time of the year, uh, and so that contributes to drying the vegetation. He says climate change is making the Santa Ana winds more powerful. The danger is much greater now with many people building homes closer to forests. Head coach Clay Helton and the Trojans fell this weekend for the second home game in a row. Our sports anchor Keith Mulder is here to test down 
to break down a testy co head coaching situation. Keith? Trevor and Nikki, it's like 1700s France out there. Trojan fans calling for Helton's head. We'll have more up next about his chances to stick around. And women's soccer is back to the playoffs and maybe another national title. As well, the Wolsey fire has devastated Los Angeles. We have an update about how LA Rams players are making a difference. Annabelle TV Sports is next. Recently, our country has witnessed catastrophic devastation. Hurricanes and flooding have upended lives and livelihoods. Across this great country, Americans have answered the call. A special calling that compels us when others are down to step up and do whatever it takes. America's at our best when, against all odds, we come together and lift each other up. Please donate to oneamericaappeal.org. America needs you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I've realized that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. He took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably gonna turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. This weekend, the Wolsey fire decimated areas of Malibu and Thousand Oaks. Thousands have been evacuated. Homes have been destroyed. But thankfully, LA Rams players are bringing more than touchdowns to help the victims. The LA Coliseum was filled with smoke and ashes on Saturday. Air quality was so bad, the Rams canceled their practices before Sunday's game, where players like Todd Gurley gave their thoughts and prayers to fire victims. What's going on, Rams Nation? Got the win against Seattle. Man, shout out to the whole city of LA. You know, through the shooting, through the fire. You know, I appreciate everyone sticking together. Prayers to everyone and their families. And I hope everyone is safe. We love you, LA. Go Rams. Fellow Rams player Andrew Whitworth, meanwhile, donated his game check from the Rams' Sunday win over Seattle to help out victims. The Rams organization is also helping out by selling game-worn jerseys to support the Conejo Valley victims and SoCal Wildfire Relief Funds in the wake of the borderline shooting and North L.A. fires. From the NFL to the NCAA now, Trojan fans were not happy after the loss to Cal, just like rapper Chief Keefe. SC fans and critics told the world what they don't like, and that was Clay Helton on Saturday. Helton received shade from many, including former NFL bust Ryan Leaf, who tweeted, there's a possibility that USC finishes 5-7 and seven this year. Will Clay Helton be looking for work if they do? Aaron Torres predicted that Helton would be taking severin severance after this season. And Arash Markazi referred to the last time SC was 5-5, five and five, the 2000 team under Paul Hackett. The Trojan finished 5-7 and seven that year, and Hackett was fired as a result. Here's what Helton had to say about the loss. Yes, I do think it is in good shape. I'm sorry for the 5-5 five and five season right now, um, but better days are here to come. Sometimes it, you have a season that it just doesn't go your way. Um, but I believe, in, I believe in this coaching staff. I believe in the leadership. I believe in our players, most of all. Uh, and I believe that better days are ahead. Keith Helton believes there are better days ahead. What do you think? Uh, is this his last season? I don't know. Lynn Swan, he's definitely a patient guy, so I can see him riding Helton's tenure out. Here's what I will say about Helton. He's much like a young Keith playing pond hockey in Chicago on very thin ice. That said, Helton's on the hot seat, but from a hot seat to a hot team, from football to football. We now move on to a team that is actually winning games in the USC women's soccer team and their first round game this weekend. Six different Trojans scored goals in a 6-0 romp over Long Beach State in the first round of the NCAA playoffs, including the 12th of the year from Leah Pruitt. Next up, the women of Troy will take on LSU in Florida. Head coach Kadani McAlpine commented on the team's momentum moving forward. Halloween might be over, but as Michael Jackson knows as good as anyone, thrillers can happen anytime. And at the Utangsu Aquatic Center this past weekend, a thriller went down between number one USC and number two UCLA. In a battle for water polo supremacy, the Trojans came out on top in a thrilling 12-11 win. 
Sam Slobodian scored four. Zach Desaw and Hiro Marin Dosic also netted three goals apiece in USC's regular season finale. Dosic gave his thoughts about his late game heroics. When I saw like Jacob on the right side sprinting, going through the going toward the cage and Meyer, then I knew that Meyer's gonna make that pass at the end because I was so open and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's it pretty much. You score a winning goal, you see that crowd, you see your coach, your teammates, everyone fired up, proud, and that's all. That's why you work, that's why you practice, but that's why you play. Guys, a very scary situation this weekend with the air quality. LA City section playoffs also postponed. Wow. Alrighty, well, thank you so much, Keith. Thank you, Keith. It seems like lots being affected. The devastating fires can affect your health. We'll have more next. Hey guys, Danny Trejo here. There was going to be a whole song and dance routine about how you should wait your turn to enter the train. But they got me, Danny Trejo, to talk to you instead. Look, when you don't wait your turn to enter the train, it's rude and potentially dangerous. And believe me, I know a thing or two about rude and dangerous. I'm Danny Trail. Don't be like rude, dude. Be kind, like super kind. Excuse me. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. More on our top story. Cal Fire says it expects the Woolsey Fire to be fully contained by Thursday. The fires pose dangers to those outside of the affected areas. The South Coast Air Quality Management District says winds spread unhealthy levels of pollutants. South Coast AQMD says most of LA has moderate air quality levels, meaning it's acceptable, but could, be, could pose a risk to vulnerable residents. Well, that's very scary. I hope that, you know, I've seen it all around USC. We've seen mm -hmm. cloudy skies all throughout the yeah. weekend. We've definitely had our fair share of um, unhealthy air, but can only imagine what it's like over there in Malibu. Exactly. Yeah. We've got to taking care of ourselves. It's yeah. The air quality is really bad. It even smells different. Yeah. No, it definitely smells different. Well, thanks for watching Annenberg TV News. From everyone at Annenberg Media, I'm Trevor Sahaki. And I'm Nikki Walker. You can watch us on the web at uscannenbergmedia.com. Good night.